so there's trees and trees and trees on the pencil and just hold it you see it's going around now i'm not blowing it it's a warm day so it's not going around you, think, you can see it's going around now Welcome once again to the Origami Museum in Colonia del Sacramento, Uruguay. Today we had a very special visit since it is Mike Lai, one of the first members of the British Origami Society. For this reason, Mike knows very well the beginnings of the BOS and how it managed to become the strong community of paper folders and great creators as we know it today. Uh, Mike is uh, with us from his home uh, due to the pandemic, and we communicate with him via Zoom. Uh, hi, Mike. Good afternoon. Hi. Here in Uruguay, it is 11 in the morning, but in England it is 3 in the afternoon. How are you? Fine. Correct. Looking forward to talking to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, to start the questions, uh, tell us a little about how you got involved with origami, at what age, and under what circumstances. Okay. Well, my first recollection of origami, although I didn't know that it was called that at the time, was when I was four. And my mother uh, uh, taught me how to make the traditional uh, little boat or whatever or but I was able to do it and that that was the start I suppose of me knowing that I loved making things out of paper this was not too long after after the war had ended and paper was quite scarce and uh, and so anyway wherever I could find a piece of paper I made one of these um, then we go on probably about another uh, another nine years and my uncle um, he, he doubled my repertoire and, uh, and showed me how to make the, uh, you know, this snapper thing, uh, which, and there are a number of different ways of doing this, but actually if you take the, um, if you take the paper boat and just tuck the sail inside, whoops, like that, so I've lost the sail, then you make the snapper. And I like things like that. It's a bonus, it's a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. From there, from there, um, it's around that time of um, when I was about 15, about 1963, something like that, and Robert Harbin was on the television. Now, I'm hoping that many of, <coughs> and many of the folks here um, have heard of Robert Harbin, um, uh, but he really was responsible for the start of the organization well not the organization but the love of origami in the uk now he had got a little slot on a television children's show and uh, he would be teaching some children and uh, i thought oh i'll have a go at this and <laughs> uh, and i did pretty well but then on one occasion i messed it up and um, at the end of it he he actually showed a book that he had written um, let's see, it's probably easy if I show it like this. Secrets of Origami. You'll notice the Japanese <laughs> art of paper folding. Well, that's what we thought it was at the time. Um, and uh, this is the original dust cover of this book. Um, and I love this book. Uh, is, and is this the original it, <laughs> book? Is, is, this, is this the first edition? Yes, it's the first edition, 1963. Um, it's full of mistakes. I'll tell you a story about that later. Um, uh, nearly every page has got an error on it. Um, but the thing that actually, this, this cost me about five weeks pocket money, would you believe, when I went and bought it. Um, but I went to a shop looking for it. Let's just see, there's one, one page. The thing that caught my eye was Adolfo Cecedas Peacock. Yeah. And I thought, whoa. And, and it was made out of a two by one rectangle. And I immediately thought, oh, I wonder if you could make these out of pound notes. Of course you can. And in fact, here's, here's one here. Here is, um, I must have made this ooh, very, you know, <laughs> I don't know the age of this particular pound, but of course we haven't got 
hangs like this anymore. They're all plastic, uh, so you, you can't do it. What, what I found with this particular model though, is if somebody said, you do origami, do you? Thinking, uh, birds and fishes, and uh, show me something. And I said, well, give me a pound note. And they were always very impressed. It won them over. It's, it was a beautiful model to actually show. And uh, so, uh, and then, so I, I folded everything in this book and, um, but I was by, very much by myself. And then, uh, so it lapsed a little bit. And then when I was 17, I had, um, what's called a detached retina in my left eye. And, uh, whoo, that was the start of uh, <laughs> a different sort of life because I finished up in hospital, had three big operations, none of them which were successful. Uh, but uh, I asked my mother to bring in the book because I was in hospital for a long time. And so it all started again. Uh, it was a, a wonderful therapy while you were in hospital because I was still able to see very well out of one eye. Um, and in that book uh, was Lillian Ahmanheimer's address at the origami center. And I finished up writing to her just saying, tell me how I can get the origami in. Um, that list, that that name or my name then got added to a list uh, which she sent to Sydney French uh, in in the UK and Sydney French started this lovely um, portfolio system. I received a letter in 1965 and it said there must be a few of us around the country uh, who are interested in origami. I want to try and put us all together and uh, his idea this, this uh, portfolio was before the starting of the British Origami Society or after? Yes. No, it was the forerunner. It was, it was the thing that got us together. Uh -huh. And then as a result of the portfolio, um, uh, a number of us, particularly John Smith, uh, wanted to formalise it a bit better. And so the British Origami was born two years afterwards in 1967. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was one of my questions, uh, that because it was uh, one of the intriguing things from uh, that time was the portfolio, which was a box, as far as I understand, that was yeah. passed from hand to hand, and it was received by mail uh, by every one of you. So tell us uh, what things were uh, there inside that box and everything that is about it. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. that was right, so, yeah, so this is, um, this is a photograph we took, in fact, this is, you asked me to write an article about this in the yes. paper, which I yes. did in two, published in 2015. Um, yeah, so you can see there's a very sturdy red box there made out of a nice uh, durable material. And in it, uh, first of all, and perhaps most important, was, was this little notebook here. And um, I think I can turn it around. Uh, and we were in, in asked to, uh, let me just put that down at the moment, and I'll just talk about it when I can. Um, we were asked to uh, talk about ourselves a little bit, and uh, um, uh, list, no, list how many books. Uh, where is that box? Is it uh, still uh, somewhere or disappeared? Yeah. The box is in the, in the British Origami Society Library. Now, during, during its time, there were probably three boxes going around because uh, if you can imagine you've got 10 people on a list and so it can take if you're allowed 10, 10 days to look at it um, you really need to keep pushing it around and around but um, sometimes there was so much of interest in it because we were all asked to contribute something um, whether it be a model uh, an article or something else of interest and um, uh, when, when we knew that this box was coming to us and Sydney was very, very organised, you received a little postcard to say the box is on its way to you. And this was a very exciting time uh, because not only uh, did you get to know about others in our group, um, uh, there were all these wonderful origami things to look at. Uh, now it was matched by the fear of what on earth you were going to put in it. <laughs> now, if you were a creative folder, that was not too bad uh, because you've got some things. But I wasn't a creative folder at that time, nor was I somebody who got lots of uh, articles or whatever. So uh, would you like to see my first 
addition to the uh, portfolio. Yes, of course. <laughs> right, here it is. <laughs> uh, we all laugh about the first models that we ever made. This is a flamingo. <laughs> wow, is this your creation? Yeah, that was my first creation and I put it in. And that was your and, original uh, one? Pardon? Is it the original one or you recreated? For the... No, no, it's a, no, it, it's an original. It's an original flamingo from a bird base. Now, every time it went around to somebody, they could comment on it, you know. And and in those early days, I think people were very kind uh, because the um, some models were a little bit, mm, a little bit dodgy, and and others were wonderful. You see, there was this lady, Iris Walker. Uh, yeah. who who um, she was in touch with Neil Elias and Fred Rome and they were communicating and there was all this wonderful material so I struggled to put one thing in there she probably put three or four you know just to make it up um, so the, the, this, box, the box also traveled to the USA back and forth or it, was it didn't go that, in no, England. eventually eventually there was um, what what happened sydney felt that there was um after about two years sydney thought that the the americans would like a box and so what he did was to take the best the best things that were in there and put them in a box themselves so there was 10 things or 12 things in there hello this is my wife sue lovely wife hello. sue yes coming pleasantly oh, nice to see you so nice <laughs> to Hi Laura. Hi, Laura. Enjoy your afternoon. This is the lady that puts up with my mess. Mm. Yes. <laughs> so nice to meet her. Thank you so, so much. So, yeah. So, um, this box in its entirety went to uh, a circuit around America. It was probably about 10, 10, 12 people. But they didn't put anything in it. They just looked at what we'd done. Uh, uh, it was an idea just to try it out. Um, what we did learn oh there was by, by the way the flamingo here this is this is the the sheet of comments that uh, my colleagues made i love this comment here which says when the flamingo is compared to the one in secrets of origami page 227 yours is rather overfed <laughs> try to make the body uh, a little thinner <laughs> And he's right, it is a bit overfed, but um, <laughs> anyway, that went around and then the next, uh, what, what happened was in six months time, four months time when it takes to come round, um, you took your model out. So the fl Flamingo with all its comments, uh, this was, this also was what I put in, let's just show you this. This is quite precious now, this is the original diagrams for it. Yeah. Which I drew. Yeah. Um, diagram. You, you, yeah. So there was a whole page of diagrams that I put in, and not many people in not many people in those days could actually draw diagrams. So who did who did it? Who diagram? I did it. You no, did. I, I did. Yeah. That that was the first drawing I did. Uh, and, and how did you? How, how did you realize? How did you come up with a way of drawing? Um, well, are, are, well, you, are you an artist? Uh, in, no, I'm, an in, I'm, I'm not an artist, I'm an engineer. I'm a en mechanical engineer. So, so at, school, I, at school I was taught to do technical drawing. Okay. The T-square and things like that. And it seemed to me to be an obvious way. Uh, of course I've got the... Um, um, so that, uh, that was helpful? Hmm. I think... Um, uh, I'd also got the books of Harbin and Ranlett. Uh, now, Jesse, um, uh, Robert Harbin, Jean, Jean, sorry, Jean Ranlett, beautiful, beautiful artist. And the diagrams in The Best of Origami and The Art of Origami, beautiful. And because there's Sam there, who's a perfectionist, there were no mistake. You will not find a mistake in those books. Anything to do with the Ranlett. And, and uh, tell me about these uh, drawings that you did uh, was before Akira Yoshisawa uh, uh, symbols, right? Yes, I used yes, I used Akira Yoshizawa symbols, ah, okay. which were which were developed by um, Ranlett and by that time. Uh, okay. as well. Seemed to me the way to do it. Um, 
and uh, uh, look an another wonderful person uh, who um, who gets forgotten about uh, is Jessie Sito, uh, one of your wonderful American ladies, and she she diagrammed many of um, Elias and, uh, and and Rome's models, and, uh, and, and I don't think yeah the I don't think that the people who do the diagrams, the illustrators, even now, uh, are given the, um, the thanks they deserve. Um, if there weren't people doing these diagrams, we'd, we'd struggle, we'd struggle, which the only way we could do it in, as an alternative really was to, we didn't have videos in those days, and uh, uh, we would do it with step folds. Yes. Uh, Iris Walker was very good, you know, draw one, in fact, there was a time where I would draw all these step folds and then put them on a photocopier, take a photocopy and then add things to the photocopy. You, you could do it that way. There, yeah. there are always yeah. ways around things. Uh, uh, let me ask you, um, there were some paper folders uh, who produced a quantitative leap in creation, like uh, Neil Elias, for instance, um, yeah. who was an American paper folder. Uh, who developed the book splitting, and uh, you even, well, you mentioned uh, already Robert Havin, uh, who was not such a good creator, but he explored the media like books and TV, and that had a big impact uh, worldwide. Uh, so it must have been a very, very exciting time to share paper folding with them. Uh, when you receive, uh, for instance, uh, the first uh, uh, original uh, objects from Neil Elias, uh, what was mm -hmm. the reaction? Because that was something completely different uh, from a, a two-dimensional <laughs> pieces, right? Well, I have a, stor a story. You see, when we met, we met at Rosalie Everline's. Rosalie was Lillian's daughter. She lived in Kensington and offered a place for us to meet, which we did every year for the first two or three years. And one or two people, Iris was there, uh, Noel Stanton was there, and they bought these models in. And uh, in a way, it was a bit deflating. I, re I remember an old model I made of an elf on a toadstool. And uh, I'm not going to show it to you. And, uh, but I did show one or two people there, and they said, oh, have you seen this? And there was the same model, or the same subject by Neil Elias, all in three dimensions and everything. And you think, well, I'm wasting my time here, but uh, <laughs> or wasting my time in this genre. Um, um, but I felt I felt at the time that my role was to actually um, make diagrams, which is something that I could do, uh, so that others would be able to make the models. And uh, and you know, in in your background there, there's the moment of truth um, by uh, Neil Elias, and I made a. Uh, what I think is a very good drawing of that. It's a very complicated model. It goes to, a, one probably goes to about a hundred steps. Um, yes. um, but through that, uh, was able to do it. Often, you know, the, the creators like Neil Elias, Fred Rome, they never did any drawings, really. <laughs> they might've done some sketches that you had to find your way through, but they were more interested in the folding than the drawing. Uh, I felt my role was to actually bring models to people that they otherwise wouldn't have been able to make through drawings. Okay, um, how, how important was uh, paper folding uh, in, uh, from, from South America, where we are now in South America, um, in the 1950s and 1960s um, in relation to other countries like um, um, England and the USA, um, was it fitting South America in your mind or was something well, it, important? I think, of course, we'd been introduced back to this book again, which, which really had a who's who of origami in the world at that time. Uh, there was a whole section on models by Ligia Montoya. And, uh, and so we, we came, uh, we, I don't think anybody was able to correspond with her. Um, and of course, she died very early on, um, but she she was an artist and uh, and has a wonderful role in the history of origami, as far as I was concerned. Um, there were um, others, but perhaps, but just names. There was very little 
new stuff coming out of there um, and um, so South America was quite uh, barren really of origami but I wouldn't say that the UK was flourishing to be quite honest uh, and, and this is why we feel or I feel 50 years on that we've actually made a difference uh, di uh, you, I know I'm uh, just a little diversion here but uh, I was watching a, a program, a quiz program the other day, and it was Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Now, I don't know whether you're aware of that program, but it's, uh, you can win a million dollars, a million pounds, or whatever. There's 15 questions, and they get more and more difficult as, as they go up. The third question on this particular program, the third, and the idea is if you don't get this right, then you don't deserve to be on the program. <clears throat> what was it? What is the art of paper folding? And you've got Pakrami, you've got four options, and one of them was origami. Now, when we started, nobody knew what the word was. Um, <laughs> you would go into a shop and say, uh, uh, do you sell origami paper? And the, question, and the answer was, ori what? <laughs> so I feel as though in this 50 years uh, that we've really educated the public. On, on, on what origami is, and that it's a little bit more than just folding birds and fishes for children, much that that is a good thing to do. Good. Uh, and this, uh, so uh, you focus on the British Origami Society in particular, or in general, the world of paper folders helped, uh, helped to educate the people. What was exactly the role of uh, the British Origami Society? <laughs> Well, um, there were a number of us in, in this area. Uh, there was uh, Ray Bolt and Dave Venables, and we, we'd all got this vision of being able to uh, try and educate people. So if there were women's groups of people who, who had speakers, we would always go along and, uh, uh, and do origami. We would, we, we would never just speak about it. They had to do it, and we still do that today. But one of the things that we found was exhibitions. And uh, there's no point going along with a box of very small models and things like that and sticking them on a table somewhere in an art gallery and expecting wonderful things to happen. You had to take it seriously. And we, 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 we uh, finished up having a, a big exhibition in a boathouse. The boats were on a lake, so the boathouse was empty. We were able to go into the boathouse put on some things outside, origami show, free, no entrance free, that's very important. And, uh, and I know we probably had about two, 3,000 people in over the weekend. And they were amazed of, of, of what we could actually do. But there was also some tables at the end where they could actually um, <coughs> do origami. You only understand origami if you start to do it. Yes, exactly. That's exactly. Very yeah. And <clears throat> I can tell you a funny story there, though, in this boathouse. Uh, at one particular time, we were, a, a lot of these uh, called punk people came in, uh, you know, with all the whatever, and we wondered whether they were going to smash the place up. But no, they were, they were wonderful, and they came in with their girlfriends, and they went round. And at the same time, we, we were running a competition of the, following the smallest flapping bird in the world. Uh-huh. A Japanese guy, uh, Professor Naoto, he made, he sent us one and it was made from a, a piece of paper which was just under two millimetres square. And he'd mounted it on a pin and he put the pin in a nice little glass globe, right? Yeah. Uh, and it was a flapping bird, right? So, uh, right at the end, we didn't charge anybody to come in, but we thought, well, there's donations there. And we put this, this, this globe there. And this one guy, he was just sitting there for five minutes and his girlfriend came up to him and said, now, what are you doing? And he said, do you know something? He said, I've been looking at this globe, this bird, this flapping bird for five minutes and he doesn't flap once. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, this is it really, we call it a flapping bird, but we have to do that. <laughs> Um, 
Mike, uh, tell us about your creations and especially the puzzles that you are famous uh, for them. And you said that you were going to show us some folding, right? Oh, I'll, fo I'll show you something. I'd, this isn't, let me just tell you about what drives me yes. uh, with, with, with the puzzles. I like origami that does things. So I love action models. I love something that can actually teach somebody a, a physical thing or whatever, something that is educational. Um, and I like things that origami can do that entertain people so they can actually do something. I think a lot of origami uh, is made and finishes up in a drawer doing nothing. Yeah. And much that, that is a shame. Uh, but that's a lot of origami is like that. Uh, it yeah. doesn't do anything. Uh, so, I, I think that it's part of the human nature to see something that is has to has to do something. I I uh, worked in the Buenos Aires Zoo about forty years ago, and um, I, I, part of my job was to bring people to and show the people different uh, animals and. Just showing them. Sometimes uh, the cases were look like empty because the the, the mammal was uh, uh, sleeping, or they were mm. hiding. There was nothing to see, and people were always very frustrated. What is he doing? What, 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 where is he? What, what is he doing? And we tried to educate them and tell them that they were doing something which is very important, hiding or sleeping. But uh, that, that, that was like, uh, I rem remember when you said about this person who was looking at the globe uh, for five minutes, uh, they must, <laughs> this, this thing has, has to do something, right? Yes. <laughs> Let me show you something. Nature? Let me show you something that does something, right? <laughs> this will take very, very, um, very very quickly it's a, de a development of something i saw and i thought hmm, this is interesting let me just switch to the next camera okay you can see that all right is that all right there laura yeah yes, perfect. right it is a little bit of origami paper it's a, just a square cut into two right needs to be quite thin that's why we're using this so if i actually fold from side to side there's only three creases in this, right? And unfold it. And then I go from the bottom right hand corner and fold it up to the top. Like that. Right. Then I unfold it and I turn it over from top to bottom or bottom to top. And I do the same again at the bottom right hand corner and fold it to the top. All right. And I unfold it and I give it a little dink underneath, just a little press and the paper. Can you see the paper sort of just yes. relaxing? And that's it, right? Now we go back to me. So here we have this. And you need a pencil for this because if you put, now it's a warm day, you could do with being a colder day, but if I put that on the pencil and just hold it. You can see it's going around. Now I'm not blowing it. Yes. If I, if I put it on my head. It keeps uh, yeah. going around. Yeah, it's it's a warm day, so it's not going around. You, you can see it's going around. Now I think that's absolutely wonderful. Yes. It's just the heat. The heat out of my body is turning that propeller around. Now, there are science teachers who do the right instrument to measure humidity or to measure. Yeah. yeah. What, what kind of uh, uh, in instrument is this? It has to do. It's a propeller. Yeah. If you understand this, if you understand that, you can start understanding what a propeller is like. Oh, okay. So this is you see, so this is where the education will come round. But you see, cold air, cold air is hotter, is, is, is heavier than hot air. So this is why you get this circulation. Uh, right. Right? So the hot air is coming out of my body 
and it's turning it around. And a good friend of mine is Robert Neal. Um, again, another one of your American superstars. And I love his things. And I, I, he would love, I thought he would love this if he didn't know it. And he's still playing with it about four weeks on. He, he, <laughs> he just loves those sort of things. And um, uh, so that's um, my, my, my little folding uh, contribution to you. <laughs> Very good. Do you have something else to show us? Yeah, well, I've got lots of things here now. Puzzles, you mentioned puzzles. Yes. Um, um, having gone through forming a society, becoming secretary of society, being very much at the centre of everything, well, what tended to happen is that I was organising it, using lots of ideas. Um, uh, but after a while, um, about 17 years ago, and things, th things went, I was realising that I wasn't folding any paper at all. Um, I was, yeah, I, I was doing everything else and the society was flourishing and, and, and whatever. Uh, but I, it seemed as though I had lost the love of folding a piece of paper. So I dropped out of the society for a while. Um, uh, we got young children and they, they got demands, obviously, and, uh, on the family and whatever. And uh, uh, there were things that needed sorting out. So it was about eight years. And then uh, I, I always kept in touch because the people were very important. Um, but what happened then was that... Uh, uh, I realised that another love of, of mine was puzzles. And I'm thinking, well, why not put origami and puzzles together? And, uh, and let's see what happens. And that was the start of a very long journey. Uh, and really has developed into a, a, a nice genre. Um, um, so what could I have to show you? Uh, well, one thing I know that you have a copy of, because I sent you one, was the checkerboard puzzle. Let me see what we've got with that. Um, what? Do you have any book uh, that uh, has been published by the, the British Origami Society with the puzzles or anything? I, like I certainly have. Um, let, I'm just trying to put those there without those going on the road. Yes, this is just um, it's just been published by the BOS, and it's checkerboard puzzles. Uh, this is another design uh, that has come out of it. Uh, but in it, there's, I tell you, there's, a lovely, there's a lovely picture in here um, of um, what the checkerboard puzzle is. There's lots of coloured pieces that have to go together to make squares. Look at that, look. There's a wine glass with a reflection in them. Everybody loves that picture. Uh, right, but let me, show you what, <laughs> let me show you what you're supposed to have to do. Right, swapping the camera again. Here we go. Here are all the pieces. So <clears throat> the idea is that you have to put them all together uh, to uh, eventually fold an eight by eight. But along the way, uh, you have to get two pieces. Let's see, there's that one. Now that one, and that one. So you're given two pieces like this to start off with and you have to make a three by three. Now that's not too difficult. You just put that in there. Then you take those three sorry, those two pieces, you add two more pieces and you have to make a four by four. And it goes on, you have to keep adding some and eventually you go to an eight by eight. Quite um, demanding to get the, uh, uh, the alternate colours. And of course, when you turn it over, it's white as well, which is another little um, demand that I put on myself. I don't know why I do these things sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> why why make life difficult for yourself but you tend to do that with origami so um um but the other thing the other thing that's um things that come out of puzzles and whatever uh, another thing i'm interested in is um tiling or tessellations as we called them earlier on um but rather than the single square tessellations these are separate pieces C comes out of what escher would have done you know he had lots of uh, lovely little pictures and things like that. Uh, incredible person. Um, um, and I had, um, I'm working on this at the moment, so I thought I would show it to you. Uh, uh, the hexagrams or the um, Star of Davids, as we call them. The, the, this is a number of Star of Davids that I've got. Uh, 
but they will not tessellate. In other words, if you put those together, right, there's always going to be a gap. We know that pen, we know that hexagons will tessellate, but hexagrams, which is what these are, won't. I've, I've always been. I think this is one of, one of the loveliest things I've ever done. Actually, it's all the different variations of that. Really? And, uh, and those, those are made with uh, several pieces of paper. Yeah, six. Just it's just six six little squares, all different colours, and they all come together and uh, make different designs. But I think it was taught by Judy Hall at a. Do you have the diagrams? Yeah, I've got diagrams. I'll send them to you. Yeah. Yes. Um, anyway, let me just show you what I've got here, because I was. This just before all this Corona this Corona business. Um, <laughs> I, was in, I was in church, uh, singing away as you do, and uh, the, the lady in front had got a bag, and 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 it was open, and she got a notebook in it, and there was this design, and I'm thinking that's funny. This this looks as though it's a tessellating uh, <laughs> um, Star of David, and so, whoops. This was the design, and um, and if you see in the middle, there's the Star of David. Yes. And yes. but what's happening is it, it it lends its little light blue triangles to adjacent uh, hexagons to make another Star of David. You can, as you move around, you can see oh, there's a Star of David there. But as one disappears, another one comes back. It's, it's quite interesting. Yes. So that's how, and I think, well, how are they drawn that then? And then it, <laughs> it, it, it occurred to me that it's made from rhombuses. And uh, let me just show you uh, here. If I put that rhombus there, okay, and then put another rhombus on the top of that one, can you see there that that is starting yeah. to become um, yeah. the star? another one underneath wow yeah, there. so that is and, and um but i had to understand before i could actually make that how the thing was made so um uh, so that's nice and another thing uh, if i turn these over you can see that uh, the thing all locks together i love i love I lo there's no point having puzzles or things like this that I, don't lock together can you move the camera a little to the right oh sorry yeah, yeah. there we are yeah, this, this, these are all uh, nicely locked together. Um, there's a nice pocket there. You can see that that tucks in. And uh, all, all, everything I do has to be well locked together. That, I think that's the engineer in me. Mustn't fall apart, right? Yes. Uh, and I'm go just going to show you a smaller version of this. <clears throat> this is a, a nice bonus. And there's always, always bonuses in origami, I think. That's, that's, Put that down there. So this is a smaller version of the same thing that you've just looked at. Yeah. Right. And also, and also all, the, all the pieces there are locked uh, in, in, uh, one to the other. Yeah, they're just placed, placed like I've placed these. Uh, they're not locked together. No, they're not ah, locked okay. together. They're just so placed they together. Put, they put one, one side to the other, but not locked. Yeah, yeah. yeah just like a tile would be. Uh, but what? Uh, this one is uh, the blue, the dark blue one has been mounted. But if I turn this over, all right, you can see that the, the design is, di <laughs> is different. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. it's, but it's still Stars of David, which is rather nice, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so that was a nice bonus. Um, but these sort of things I found, let's go back to me. Um, I've got this daughter in law, and she loves these things to put on her wall um, whatever whatever I seem to make she said yes I've got a big apartment I want to put I want to display these things I think they're lovely and and it's something that hasn't really been looked at too much I don't think um, and again another bonus I'm going to show you another little puzzle uh, which is four pieces all right this is what's called a no, I'm going to have to go back so to, the ship. To, to summarize the puzzle uh, project is uh, that each piece is an origami uh, work. 
each, each piece. Each piece is folded and locked in, so it's perfect piece of origami. But then the, um, the design, the final design is a tiling. It's not necessarily locked together. No, no. Uh, and the reason that for that is, A, well, it makes it easier, but um, I, was, I, I always tried to look at, um, uh, I went to the Alhambra in Spain and uh, uh, because that's that's what I was trying to work with and, and what Escher had done. Um, uh, now you could lock it together. Um, I worked with, I had this idea for the Pixel project, um, which when you see the magazine, uh, poor, poor Max Hume, he died very recently. And uh, uh, I had this idea for Pixels, which would make a picture of an eye, but, but they all needed to be locked together. And I wasn't clever enough to do that but Max was. And uh, so you, again, that's, that's another thing, the pixel project uh, it goes on. But this, this little, uh, let me just, just show you this. This, this. this is a little puzzle first, and then I'll show you what can come out of it. So we go over here, and we've got four pieces, and the idea of these is you have to make them into a square. So let's try and that's these. Right. I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> can't do can't can't do my own puzzles here. This is terrible, isn't it? That's a bit better, isn't it? Right. So if we do that, and then that one must come in like that so that's right the four the four puzzle the four pieces make a square and then if you arrange them another way and we won't do that um, yes. um but you can you can make the same square with a hole in yeah so anyway i put this down uh, another yeah. person that uh he, he did uh, that, um you, you know uh, francis o yeah, I met Francis. Lovely, yeah. lovely fellow. Okay, yeah. he, he did a tangram with the um, uh, folded pieces and then, well, play with the tangram. The well, what, now, what I did with this and what I do with any puzzle is to say what else is in there. There's usually a bonus. I keep going on about this bonus, but uh, I always think the best games that you can play have often got other games that you can play. You've just got to change things around a bit or whatever, um, because I love variety. I love variety. And so I always seen what I can do. And I, I made a few of these and put them on the carpet or on the floor just to look at them, which, which is another technique of mine. I'll just leave them there and see if it, what, what inspires me. And uh, uh, I put them on a piece of card and I walked past and I kicked, kicked the card by mistake. So all of a sudden they all parted. And that was the start. That was the start of what I call um, stained glass paper folding, right? <laughs> Let me just put this on the camera for you. Oh, right. So, yeah. can you see the four? You can see the four pieces, but yes. uh, they're arranged in a certain way. Yes. And uh, and every time I see that, I think that is a very nice shape. Um, very. I haven't seen, very haven't seen it before. And uh, <clears throat> so there's uh, was it four people now have got one of those on their wall. You see, it gives us a wonderful, a wonderful way of displaying the the number of colours we've got in our origami papers. And uh, this, this can be also a very nice uh, children uh, pastime and uh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Oh yes, they, they love playing around with uh, things like this and making their own shapes. Children have got wonderful imaginations and uh, yes. uh, they show you things that you haven't actually seen them for yourself. <laughs> so, so from puzzles, you can get to lovely pictures that can go on people's walls. You can get into the tilings. You can get into a number of things. And uh, that, is, that is where I am at the moment. That is where, where my journey is. There's, there seems to be no shortage of material about. I think in the early days, 
I, there are two sorts of people. One who get, get the subject matter in their heads and work towards it. The others seem to just play around until something comes. I'm certainly of the former. I need to have the ideas before I actually start uh, making something. Or at least it works out that way. That doesn't mean to say that something else doesn't evolve, um, but um, I need to have the idea in the first place. So do, do you still create? Uh, are you still uh, moved by the uh, wish to create something new every day or from time to time you come up with new ideas? I think um, uh, uh, the answer is yes. There is, there is a sequence here. There's the there's getting the idea, there's making the model, and sometimes that comes can come quite easily. Then there's the making the model again to get the best process, in other words, the best sequence uh, to actually teach somebody. Um, and that is very important to me. Uh, um, I, I, I will work and work and work to make the best sequence that I can get. Um, I don't mind everybody does different uh, diagrams in a different way. And I don't mind what those diagrams look like as long as the student can make the model from them. Um, uh, bad diagrams don't do origami any good at all. Because if you can't make the model for the diagrams, the student says, hmm, this is too difficult for me. Not thinking that the diagrams are wrong or not very well explained. And uh, this is one of the things we've got worries with the internet because there are so many drawings and things and bad videos. There's some good videos, of course, but there's a lot of rubbish there. And, um, and it's lovely to get people involved in origami, um, um, but let's get it right. Uh, so that's the second bit. Then the next bit is, after you've done all these notes and things, that's to draw it up um, so that somebody else can do it. I'll only draw one of my models if I think somebody might be interested enough to do it. Um, uh, like every other, other person who's involved in creating, we, we're quite capable of coming up with stuff that's not very good. So. <laughs> can I tell you a fu funny story about this? Just yeah. a funny story. Dear old Robert Harbin, who's a really good mate of mine, and uh, I got to know him very well. <clears throat> and I got to, the, got to the point where I said, Bob, you have done a wonderful job in getting origami uh, to, um, <clears throat> to the, the general public or whatever. And he did a fantastic job. Um, and, uh, you know, other organisations would have given the right arm for Robert Harbin. He, he could get into television. He could, you know, and, and writing books was a no problem for him. But I said, Bob, Bob, much that you get people involved, if the diagrams have got mistakes in them, it puts people off. And uh, I knew him well enough to be able to tell him that. And he said, Mick, I know you're right. He was a very impulsive person. He would actually have an idea, do it, do it as quickly as possible, then it'd be on to the next thing. Ideas, ideas, ideas. He said, right, I'm writing Origami 4, that's the, one of paperback books, and I've nearly finished it. I, I want you to come down to London for the day and we'll, you can go all through the book and correct it for me if there's any mistakes. And I said, yep, yeah, okay, I'll do that. So I had a day off work, um, got to um, <coughs> his apartment in London at uh, nine o'clock in the morning. And he got all the diagrams there in a great big pile. And, uh, <coughs> and he said, right. Um, he said, we've got to be at the publishers at half past 10. Uh, so you've got an hour and a half. You can do it in the taxi while we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked, and he got, he said, here's a pen and, uh, and, and what some white. What's this about? In your uh, room. Yeah. <laughs> He said, here's a, bottle of, here's a bottle of corrective fluid. You can take it with you. And <laughs> so there, <laughs> there we were. There was, I don't know, there was his, um, <laughs> in the back of this cab, driving through London, trying to correct this book. And uh, I'll probably... Did you manage might, to make any change? 
Well, oh yes, I made quite a few changes. Don't worry about that. There were mountain folds that should be valley folds and, and all this sort of business. But there was probably an awful lot that I still missed. Sure. Uh, but that, that was... He, uh, he didn't care much. He just wanted to go. He didn't care much about this tiny mistake, tiny or big mistakes. He didn't care. He just went to the next... Uh, no, he wanted, he wanted the next one out because when he, he phoned me, one of the most difficult phone calls I had was that he was on this cruise. Uh, world cruise that he did late in latter life and went round as a magician that was and uh, he was a performer on cruise ships and <clears throat> and they had to fly him back because he, his cancer had come back and he was in a pretty bad way and uh, he said I've got uh, he says I don't want to go I've got another three books inside me to write there was a book on Neil Elias's material a book on Fred Rome's and others and things like that um, but he, he, he phoned specifically just to tell me that he wasn't going to be here for very long and that he had um, changed his will to make sure that we got um, uh, the proceeds of uh, the sales of the books. Uh, all the royalties came to the British Origami Society and that has been wildly, wi wisely invested, in, in, invested and has enabled us to, to do things that we wouldn't normally do. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm looking to the time and we are almost an hour um, in the conversation. Well, it's been well, a, a huge pleasure for me, Mike, to have you here. Really a, a big pleasure. And I thank you very much for your time, for showing all the things beautiful that you created and the uh, memories with the friends that are not longer with you, but uh, you remember them very fondly. So thank you very, very much. I hope uh, we will continue talking. For me, origami is just about as much about people as it is about paper. Uh, if I was doing this by myself, well, I don't think I would still be doing it by myself. It's that wonderful reaction that uh, of seeing somebody talking together about something that you love, both love. It's, um, it is a wonderful thing. And, uh...